Ladies and gentlemen, the Shrek Games Video Com video. The GTC 2016 conference hosted by NVIDIA has come to an end, the dust has settled, and people are of course talking about what happened, what was announced, and what wasn't announced, so it's probably the biggest uh, elephant in the room. So first of all, what was announced was a lot of stuff regarding deep learning, virtual reality, and also we finally saw a Pascal card. Unfortunately for everyone in the room, it wasn't the Pascals that we were hoping for, it wasn't the 1080s, instead it was the Pascal Tesla P100. We're still going to talk about that because it is a very exciting announcement in and of itself. It does tell you what Nvidia have been uh, planning, I guess you could say. And the good news is this card does live up to the expectations you would ex you would have had. It has a ridiculous number of transistors, over 15 billion, full high bandwidth memory 2 compliance, ridiculous compute performance, whether that's single precision, double precision, whether that's having a clown juggling while on a unicycle precision, it's, it's an absolute beast and it is 16nm FinFET process. A lot of that stuff isn't particularly surprising to many of you. It's been rumoured, it's been heavily hinted at by NVIDIA themselves or downright confirmed by NVIDIA themselves. But I do want to talk about the conference as a whole for just a moment. Now, it was a two hour, just a slightly over two hour um, conference and honestly speaking I felt that it could have been condensed quite a bit. I felt that it went on for a bit too long and I felt that some of the points were kind of blabbered and a lot of it was repeated over stuff that's already been discussed a couple of times over by now. Uh, there was a lot of discussion in the automotive industry, there was a lot of discussion on deep learning and some of it was really cool, without a question. But I did get the sense that not only was the audience bored at some times during the conference because of muted applause, but I think the biggest thing was that people in the chat were even a little upset. Now, I do think some of that is not NVIDIA's fault. GTC 2016, GTC as a whole, is not just for gaming. It is for anyone and everyone who uses graphics technology, GPUs to do the computing, whether it's NASA, whether it's Google, whether it's bloody, you know, Heinz Beans trying to figure out the best way to create their recipe, it's for everything. And obviously, deep learning, AI, and all this stuff now is really becoming dependent on GPU computing just because of how it works. Therefore, I do think a lot of gamers were watching the stream, really hoping that we were going to get a lot of announcements on, let's say, the GTX 1080 costing X amount of money. It was going to be released in X time, and everyone was going to be happy, and there was going to be, you know, strippers and stuff dancing on stage. But reality, of course, does not necessarily match up to that. We've heard a lot of tentative announcement dates, and we've certainly seen a lot of Zuba shipping manifests, and we've certainly seen a lot of supposed leaks in the industry, but it was really looking increasingly unlikely that GTC was going to be the event that was going to debut Pascal as a whole. It was going to debut Pascal as the, as the event that we were looking for, and to be fair, you know, some one or two of those shipments could have ended up being the Pascal board that was shown on stage. We just don't really know. But what we do know, without a question, is that for end users, for the average end user, what we are looking for instead is most likely going to be Computex in May. If we're lucky, we'll see a formal Pascal announcement there. I have to say, from the perspective of a journalist slash tech analyst slash YouTube gamer thing, just me, you know, just Paul sitting here talking to you, I think, if anything, it probably helped AMD um, from the perspective of gaming. Whether that means a damn thing in the long run, because let's say for the sake of argument, Pascal ends up being twice as fast as Polaris, and obviously I'm just pulling that out my ass, it's probably not going to be anywhere near that big of a difference. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised if they trade blows. But let's just say it was, then obviously it doesn't matter about any of the bad publicity or disappointment NVIDIA are facing now. In the long run, it's going to be the products and the pricing and the support from the developers and the ecosystem and all of that crap that really makes the difference. Um, so I guess we're just going to have to see. 
For me, I felt, once again, just to summarize, the conference was pretty good. There was a lot of interesting stuff on AI deep learning, but then again, I am kind of interested in that stuff. I don't know enough about it to really um, to really do a full report on it. I don't know enough about AI and uh, deep learning, if I'm totally honest. I'm learning about it, pardon the pun, but um, I felt that the conference just could have been condensed quite a bit. A bit like this commentary, actually. So anyway, I do want to talk to you about Pascal, the Tesla P100. So just to clarify, I know it's probably pretty obvious, but this is a hyperscale data center GPU. What that basically means is you're not going to run crisis on it. It is for ridiculous amount of calculations. It is for high performance market. It is for ridiculous usages. This is not a card that once again you're going to do gaming on but it does have the main key features that would have expected it has a ridiculous amount of performance so this can power HPC deep learning all of that type of stuff that you would expect and potentially want a card like this for these are not cheap they're gonna cost a ridiculous amount of money it's gonna feature NVLink which is a specific bandwidth uh, sorry specific connector to offer ridiculous bandwidth to um, multiple GPUs. The idea here is that it allows a more scalable infrastructure. Essentially speaking, if you're putting, let's say, six GPUs into a system or eight GPUs into a system, you're going to be able to much better leverage that performance than what you are on a traditional PCIe connection. With that all said, there are some problems with it. The biggest issue is that, well, it's for specific architecture. So it's going to be for the IBM mainframes. It's not for x86. Whether there's going to be a variant of that on the desktop, we don't know yet. Uh, AMD are working on one, but they've not also announced whether it's going to be for the desktop either, so we can only wait. Actually, I believe in AMD's maybe for desktop, actually, coming to think of it. I think it will be, but I think it's for specific usage scenarios. I'm going to have to double check on that. My memory's a bit slippery. Anyway, HBM2 it is there. Uh, this means that, at least on the card they've announced so far, we're going to have up to 16 gigabytes of the stuff on board. We may see more, we may see 32 gigabytes in the future, but obviously just because of the size of the DRAM at the moment and the fact that they're aiming to launch, get GPUs out, they're actually saying that they're going to launch soon, in quotation marks, that was the exact word he used, soon. There was not any ambiguity there, he was not inferring a meaning of tomorrow, he was literally just saying soon, so your guess is as good as mine what soon means. Soon in the movement of planets, or soon in the movement of a bus. We just don't know. Um, it is 16nm FinFET, unsurprising to absolutely no one. But the real thing here is the performance. The GPU itself is absolutely insane. Now, remember that the GPU core of this processor, the Tesla P100, is still GP100. Now you're looking at 56 SMs, which are the shader, um, the shader modules, which are equivalent of the SMXs or SMMs in previous architectures. You're looking at a ridiculous number of CUDA cores. You're looking at 3,584, which is up by about a quarter over the previous Tesla M40, which was the GM200 found in Maxwell. And the boost clock is almost 1500 megahertz, which is absolutely ridiculous. 1480, don't you know, which is absolutely insanity. Obviously, the bus width is 4096 bit because it is HBM2, unsurprising there. And it has a TDP of 300 watts. Speaking for a moment about virtual reality, and there were certainly some very impressive applications of the technology on display. Now, I know VR is kind of a washed out topic at the moment. It's not to say that people aren't interested in it. It's just that there's been so much talk about it at the moment. I think people are not exactly tuning out, but they want to see something more. They want to really experience the technology themselves, or maybe just see how it goes. And it was quite interesting, though, because there were some very interesting applications of the technology shown on stage, as I said. One of the more impressive ones, in my opinion, was the Mars demo. Essentially, this was a, I guess you could say, reconstruction of what it would be like to live on Mars in 2030. Um, the idea here is that NASA 
uh, worked alongside them and they basically reconstructed the surface of Mars from thousands of different photographs and it was a very cool demo. You even got to drive around in a rover, you got to basically freely move around on the surface and it was all really, really cool. Now, what's the thing that murders your experience in virtual reality? That would be nausea and that is created by latency and it was actually kind of funny because they got Steve Wozniak on stage trying out this demo and after a bit of confusion where he was getting used to the controls it only took a few moments before he actually started to feel quite nauseous um, and it was actually quite funny because Jen himself said well that wasn't particularly helpful this is going to be is incredible it? for whoever gets to really do it <laughs> I'm getting dizzy I'm going to fall out of this chair <laughs> Well, was that was not a helpful comment. Um, <laughs> <laughs> to him. Because obviously it meant that he was experiencing nausea, which wasn't really what you want to sell to your viewers, because that means that basically the GPU is creating some latency. To be fair, some folks are susceptible to, to um, I guess you could say, VR lag or VR nausea as a whole. So I have a feeling that those individuals, there are just going to be some chaps, some chap S's who just experience it no matter what the experience or how perfect that experience is. But I did find it rather amusing. Now, apart from that, there was one other PRE number that was thrown around, touted, um, and that was a speed of image processing. Basically, this is more to do with, once again, image recognition, deep learning, and all of that jazz. So probably something that you and I, on average, are not super duper interested in. But essentially, Jen went on stage and touted that they had managed to achieve a 12 times speed up in a single year, which is very impressive. But during GTC 2015, it took them 25 hours to accomplish a certain task, which was image processes per day, a number of images per day, rather, sorry. And that required four Maxwell GPUs. They managed to shave this number down to just two hours a day, which is very impressive. But they were showing that this to be a 12 speed, uh, 12 times speed up, excuse me, over a year. The problem is that math doesn't work so well because you've got eight Pascal GPUs. Now this is mostly to do with the way that they can actually use their new compute system and the hardware that they're putting together. So I guess it's technically half accurate, but it's also not accurate as in you would hope. So it's kind of a pr -y number I guess you could say. I will say during the car segment where I was showing obviously self-driving cars, I was very impressed. I did cringe a lot when the Knight Rider music was played on stage and I won't show that bit, bit of video simply because of copyright reasons, but it was pretty darn bad. Um, and I, I have to say that I think the segment would have been taken a lot more seriously without that. I know what they were trying to do, but I don't think it quite worked. It wasn't like the cars were racing around at like 300 miles an hour on stage, which would have looked rather cool, but unfortunately weren't doing that during the demo. Overall, what do I think of the conference? I think that we got basically what we'd expected. Um, I wasn't really thinking we were going to be seeing much more than that. I know a lot of folks expected to see you know, the GTX 1070 announced, or the 1080 specs, plus the pricing, plus all of that stuff. Personally, I didn't expect that. What I'd hoped for, however, was a basic demo of some description, um, by which I mean a card that was a customer variant playing a game, a bit like AMD did with the Hitman demo back uh, a couple of weeks ago, and that would have just been kind of like, we're here, we're, you know, we're alive. And this has led to a lot of discussion on Pascal's going to be delayed again, Pascal's going to be this, Pascal's going to be that. And honestly we, honestly, we just don't know at this point. I don't think Pascal will be delayed because obviously if the P100 is actually coming out, which it looks like it, um, but obviously the fact that he said soon rather than an official release date, you could take that as one of two ways as well. And you can take that as, well, we're just not ready to announce the release date because we don't want to give that information to our competitors or B, we're just not quite sure when we're going to get mass production of them. To be fair to NVIDIA, however, with the P variants, with the with the um, 
a super duper high end some of this could be down to the fact that, that they are using HBM2 and we all know that there's a delay with HBM2 with the customer variants at least the 1070 1080 which are going to obviously replace the 970 980 respectively that's not the case with the 970 with the 1070 and 1080 they're going to be using GDDR5 possibly 5x because that has more than enough memory bandwidth for the moment yeah Anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.